Howdy guys, welcome back to more Kirkira. In the last episode, Karari and I shared a very special, tender, loving moment. You didn't get to see any of it, but rest assured it happened. It happened in a big way. But enough about that. Let's continue. Beat it is starting now. Then I see the most shocking scene imaginable on the TV monitor. I teased last time what scene it could possibly be. What what, what could it possibly be that is most most shocking? Well, find it right now. <sighs> Cry me kissy. Now everyone in the world knows. It's the show at the FTR event. I knew the TV camera was there, but I can't believe they actually used this scene. And at the start of the program, and a close-up angle too. It's my first time seeing myself kissing on the screen like this, but this kiss is very intense and erotic. Is this okay to air? I did this on the stage? It's not time to think about that now. No, no, of course. Oh, shit. Marikami splashes the whiskey out of his mouth. It's not what it looks like. I swear. I was not telling you a lie, I just was telling you the half truth. Uh oh, he's mad. No, this is just a stage performance, I swear. I'm making an excuse, of course. Uh, yeah, but Tanoya calmly hands me my cell phone, which was on top of the keyboard on the other side of the room. It's from Chini. Hold on. Hello? <laughs> that actually sounds like a cell phone. That's kind of funny. She says they're laughing at me. <laughs> it's my phone you called. What do you want? <laughs> yeah, I saw it. Together. <laughs> hey, no, this is a new route. <laughs> Poor Karari, she must be so fast. Wow, sounds like you guys are having fun. I feel more calm and glaring at me. I guess we'll have some fun now. In a bad way. And you get the good stuff. Uh, yeah, we're drinking expensive liquor too, so it's even. Oh, yeah? I feel Murakami's breathing even harder. This guy's gonna kill me. Okay, he said, she said not to fight. So don't fight, okay? She sounds like her mother. Okay, sure. I'm not looking at Murakami anymore. Huh. Then I get a full Nelson. <laughs> oh god, Murakami snapped. He's gonna go on a blind death rage. His face is red and he's smiling and crying at the same time. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, please. I, I didn't mean to hide it, okay? It was a plan to tell you afterwards, I swear. I keep making excuses like a husband caught on cheating. Wait, really? You Titans suck! Hey, what you're saying doesn't match what you're doing. They look at Tanoya to have him help me, but he's talking on my cell phone watching TV. I'm sure he's talking to Chini. He just keeps talking. He's carrying on a normal conversation, completely ignoring me. Murakami's almighty arm is tightening the lock, regardless of my resistance. He's killing me! He's killing me! Is it you, Chini, on the phone? Can you hear me, please? He's killing me, he'll do it. Help! Tanaya doesn't care. <laughs> 
Some friend you are, Tanaya. Sure. He's talking enthusiastically. They're having a good time talking about something I don't know about. But they're not listening to what I'm to saying. So, what Murakami's saying sounds wonderful, in theory, but it feels awful, and my consciousness fades out like that. So, that's how my short summer break ends. This game has chapters? I completely forgot. It looks like you're just going back and forth. I'm sitting on the carpet watching the TV with a bottle of juice in my hand. I'm watching a TV game on the screen. I haven't seen these outfits in a long time. Gora is sitting on her knees playing a game in her school uniform. She's still looking at the monitor as she answers me. Your level's good enough now. Why don't you go up there and meet the boss? Don't piss off your girlfriend, dude. You just got her. But, but, she doesn't know how to play. She doesn't buy weapons or armor. She only uses what she's found in treasure boxes or items the enemy had. To be fair, I've done that a lot in RPGs because usually I usually find stuff that's better than what I can buy in shops. Or I just don't want to waste the money. I'm, I'm a Scrooge in games like that. So, some of her teammates are still wearing the basic equipment. You need to raise the level of the characters to continue the game with fewer items. But when her weapons are so poor, it's hard to kill the enemies even to raise the level. And if you think she might have lots of money saved up since she's not willing to spend it on weapons, that's not the case. She doesn't want to buy weapons and armors, but she buys a lot of life-saving items. She uses it every time the character gets hurt just a little. No way could she save up on money either. Everything is inefficient. There's no point on what she's doing, so let's buy equipment and go further along the way and battle with enemies who can raise the level. This is what I've been telling her many times, but she gets more upset every time I say it. Didn't even stop the game around here, but how many times did your team die? Look, this weapon store has... Uh oh. No, don't go home. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I have to shut up because I don't want her to go home. I love her. And Karara continues to play and her mood gets better in no time. The hard enemy comes out and almost kills her character and she has to use all of her items. But Karara seems to be enjoying the process and she's crying and laughing looking at the TV monitor. I know the fun of the game is not just to make the character strong and collect all the items efficiently and continue on with the story. But I can't play the game getting scared every time a new enemy comes up and run all the way back to the entrance of the dungeon or start talking to the characters in the game. I like to play the game smoothly and it makes me frustrated to stop it and go like this. But Karai seems to enjoy it. People have so many different ways to enjoy things. I understand that. I understand it as a completely leg legitimate way of enjoying the game. Is it just my bad personality that I feel frustrated watching her play? But why is she like this? I wonder. She's so good at puzzle games, but she's awful in RPGs. We were playing a puzzle game before she started playing this game. We can play together, and although I played this game a lot, I couldn't beat Karari at all. I think she let me win a few times because she was feeling sorry for me. It's strange. <sighs> Look, there she goes again. Listen, you need the fire blade for this guy. I say it without talking, thinking. Rikari's finally upset. Demon. Oh, I'm sorry. I won't do it again. I apologize, but Rikari didn't even listen to me and keeps pouting her lips. She turns off the game after she saves and stands up with her school bag. I try to stop her and keep making excuses. Well, because you need to buy the suitable equipment at the store. You wouldn't have to spend so much time. Mm. Rikari stomps out of the room. Uh, hey, w wait. <gasps> no! Before I try to keep going, knocking my hand off of her shoulder. Don't get upset like that. No! We broke up. This was quick. 
Wait, we're not even married. Karai's trying to go home, and I'm trying to keep her to stay. We're shoving and talking to each other. Oh, yeah, this is his house. Murakami has a bitter face. Right, we're in Murakami's house. But it's because Karai gets upset so quickly. Hmm. We stop talking and sit on our legs right in front of each other. Mm. But, but. Don't tell me shut up. しいのは<笑> マルカミナ。そもそもな。お前らなんで俺の部屋で遊んでるんだ。日曜日だってうちで待ち合わせなんかしてる。あのな、カップルだったら放課後はどこへなりとも遊びに行くのが普通じゃないか。それかどっちか
dressed as a girl, but nobody cares if a couple is walking holding hands. It's nothing compared to that. Maybe this is something that changed a lot about me in this summer. I used to care what other people thought before, but I didn't really care anymore. I might be able to walk down the street wearing the same clothes as Karahu now. Now I'm not sure if that's good or bad. The sun is making the street red, and I can smell the food coming from somewhere. The wind is cooling down now, and the trees on the street are starting to turn yellow. Everything is getting ready for autumn right before October starts. Karari is naming everything she wants to eat together after we study at the library. Karari seems to be happy when she's thinking about food. She's always smiling. She still smiled even after we broke up the band, although it made her sad. Of course, she doesn't act like she's regretting it. Karari's the one who sparkled the most on that stage. Karari's the one who had the most applause. Everybody only looked at Karari. I wonder if she doesn't miss all that. Now she's back to being just another student. It seems so strange to me. Our wonderful summer break has ended. And our lives are starting to be bored with reality, which is like gray clouds hanging over our head. Karari's not going to university. She says she's getting a job to help out the family's financial situation. It's impossible for her to continue with her academics since her family is poor beyond my imagination. Karari has better grades than I. I'm sure she can get grants and scholarships to continue, but her family needs her to work as soon as possible. And she works even now when we don't see each other. I mean, it's better to go to university and find a better job than start working right out of high school. Karari and her family know that too, but because they're so desperate, they can't wait for that. It's a huge waste of her life. You know, I wonder if Karari is ever happy about her life and what her future brings. Is really, she really happy with this? Does she want to change anything? I don't know what she's thinking. She's just laughing. She seems to be happy and enjoying her life. She says it's because of me, but I feel I can't take credit for it. You know, I've never really heard her complain about her family being poor. She's a delicate person, no doubt. I'm sure she's feeling something. Maybe she just doesn't like talking about things like that, but it makes me sad that she doesn't talk to me about it. My heart aches in pain just thinking about how she's feeling. I want to say something about it, but I can't. I have to grow up more. I mean, who am I to be walking into somebody else's financial situation? I need to study. I really don't feel like it, but I think this kind of thing makes me grow up as an adult. Right now, I'll just do whatever I can to make her happy. No. Karari, do you want to go somewhere after the exam? It doesn't have to be an expensive place, but somewhere like a hot spring? She stops counting food and nods really hard. She laughs. Aww. Awesome. We're playing badminton after school to get some exercise because we're fat. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. We divide into two teams and play for a while. Tanoya and I are on one team, Markami and Chini on the other. Markami and I are on different teams because we both have played tennis before, but Markami can't get used to how shutter the shuttlecock moves instead of the tennis ball, so he kept swinging his racket in different directions. Chini's playing much better than him. I like playing sports, so I don't have a problem, but what should I do about Tanoya? He's like a god on stage. But he's a complete idiot when he has a racket in his hand. <laughs> he keeps swinging his racket with his po poker face, but nothing happens. So Chini and I run all over the court covered for our partners, and we're the only ones who get tired. Kashiwara and Karari are not here. They're at the library since Kashiwara is not good at playing sports. I feel embarrassed to hang out with Karari at school, too. Karari doesn't care where she's at. I don't care if she acts boldly in the city, but not in the school. Everybody at school knows we're dating since the beat it aired. So, keeping a distance with Karari is a critical rule to protecting my honor. 
Everybody asks me. But it's not that. And it's not their business. Anyway, it's about the gig now. So now you're not. Sure. Let's, let's talk to um Yagi Har again. Man, he was a character. Oh. How exaggerated. I make fun of her, but Chini ignores me, as usual. She seems like she wants to pull out her, out her wallet. But don't you have the trial test that Sunday? Aren't you going to study? Hey Murakami, she's picking on you. What? なんだそうかびっくりしたぞ。一生懸命頑張ってるように見つかけて、実はかなりサボってるのを見抜かれてしまったのかと。<laughs> You gave me that big spiel about you studying because you don't want to do all this over and then you just act like it. Oh, Murakami. So you're loafing, I knew it. What the hell are you wearing? That is, that's not a tie. That's horrible. It's horrible. Take it off. Are you sure? Don't take it too easy. I'll cry later. You're just making excuses. You better do as much as you can when you can do it. I'm going to show you how hard I tried. I expect her to kid me back. But to my surprise, she nods sincerely. Chini knows I had good grades once. Once. So, you know, maybe she's overestimating me. I pull myself together. That's why, Tanaya, I'm afraid I can't go. Sorry, man. Don't they seem surprised when I answer him? I wonder if he wasn't listening to me. あなたの進路希望って進学じゃなかったっけうん。それはやめたんだ。あ、やめたってどういうこと僕はアメリカへ行く。あ。アメリカ。君に見られるサプライズ。オフコース、the same親戚が向こうで暮らしているんだ。真面目にロックをやるつもりがあるんなら来たらいいって言ってくれたんで。言葉に甘いようと思ってね。なんだか本格的だね。どのやんって本当に私らと付き合えるの違うことをするよ。I よくはそこまでできたよ。すごいなって思って。え、it's <笑> あのスタージェネレーションの天才ギタリストケンタ様に私たちが影響を与えてしまいましたか。Jenny <laughs> seems very happy to hear that. すごい影響を受けたよ。春に君たちと一緒にバンドを作った経験は一生の財産になると思う。Come on, group hug. Come on. Come on, group hug. Not you, Mark. Come get back. Just me and Tanya and Jenny. Group hug. そこまで言われると。Oh, she looks so cute when she's blushing. Let's not be concerned about Cheney here. Wait, what about Star Generation? You can't come back from America every time you have gigs, can you? 
What? Breaking up the band? Tonight says it's like it's nothing special, but it's a huge surprise. Tony thanks for a second. ま、前から矢木さんはスタージェネレーションの活動とは違うことも そうかな。だって音が維持できてたら解散はしなかったって聞こえるけど。うん。そうかな。そうだと思うよ。うん。じゃあ悪いこと。<笑> アメリカ行くのは来年の夏だからすぐにバンドを辞めなくちゃいけないわけでもなかったんだけど、ヤギさんが辞めるって言うから、てっきり… Murakami continues not allowing to know finish. いやいや、お前だったらもう成功は確約されたようなものだ。ヒゲすることはないぞ。お前の素質はすごいんだ。俺が保証する。Murakami nods as if he's the one who taught to know you.しかし、若者は成長し。未来に向けてどんどん飛び立っていくんだな。こんな平凡な街で育った少年が世界に羽ばたき、やがて天下をつかむ。時間の流れとはこういうものなんだな。人間、未来に向かって気を大きく自信を持って生きていかんとな。Yeah, I was just wondering what kind of future you're planning to fly into. I can only see huge dark clouds where you're headed right now. Providence. I mean, you're going to Providence, Rhode Island, right? Why would you go there? Maybe you should do your best before you leave the rest. なんだか村上君はすごいね。君は<笑> No. No. He hits my back with his racket. That hurt. I don't want to be like you. But if you ask me what my goal is, I'm not able to tell you. So with that, I'm going to end the video off here and I will see you all in the next video. So take it easy guys. Peace out.